Hello, Dixie Bell Paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa coming to you live from uh, the dining room floor <laughs> where I am getting ready to play some paint. And I thought you might want to come and join me. So welcome. How is everybody today? Let me know where you're tuning in from. Let me know that you can hear me A-OK. -okay. And we will get started and have some fun. So I have some fun stuff to show you and share with you all today. Some really cute little things. Um, I have some really cute little transfers from the new Bells and Whistles line. And I also have a brand new stencil. So I see people hopping on. Hello, Dixie Bell. Hello, Lynn. All right, let's just jump right in. So I have this little trunk. It's wood. It's a wood trunk. It's really ugly. And I don't know what to do with it. But I do know that I had the new Bells and Whistles transfer hanging out right here. Can you see how cute that is? So cute, so cute. So I knew I had this and I've been dying to use it. And I thought that this might be the perfect transfer to use and put onto a box. Because sometimes if you do like too girly on a piece of furniture, only girls can have it, right? Like if I stuck that on a dresser, it's gonna be a girly dresser. So this is a perfect way for me to play with the transfers and get to see how I like this one because I knew I liked it the best at the beginning. It was a, a hot number two to the steampunk. I really like the steampunk too, um, but this is really cool. So I'm gonna show you my transfer and we're going to talk about colors and then I'm gonna do actually some of this transfer on another box so that you can see how it goes. Hello, bonjour, hello from Montreal. I love Montreal. I love old Montreal, right downtown with those cobblestone streets and amazing places to go. It feels like Europe. You're very lucky to live there. You're blessed to live in such a nice place. Although I bet you it's cold today. I bet you it's cold there right now. So, okay, stop being distracted. Again, with the squirrel distraction, I could go off. This is why I don't read comments because I'm my own distraction. All right, let's do this. When you open a bells and whistles transfer, it's going to come with a cute little stick. This is your burnishing tool to burnish this transfer down onto your piece. It's also going to come with come out, an instruction sheet, okay? Um, if you need to learn all about how to apply a bells and whistles transfer, please go to my website, um, which is www.thetopdrawerrva.com, where I have posted a blog and I have shown you exactly how to use a Bells and Whistles Dixie Bell transfer, okay? So inside of this particular transfer, there are four sheets. I'm gonna show you every single one. There's a cutie patootie little Alice sitting in her chair, really pretty muted colors, okay? There's like the cat, there's the clock, the whole thing. On this page we have the bunny, and we have like the queen of hearts. And you know what I dig about this transfer? I like that Alice is kind of moody and cranky. I like a cranky Alice, I like it. <laughs> she's she's much better than a really cheery Alice. I like them more when they're a bit of a pain in the butt, like me, I guess. So you have another page with a little king and some little Tweedledum Tweedledee. And one more sheet with her sitting at a table, again, looking cranky, looking mad, with the cat, some flourishes, a crown, etc., etc., etc. So based on these colors on this transfer, I didn't want to do pink and I didn't want to do blue. Because I see a lot of pink and a lot of blue and it made me feel like I might lose them a little bit. I want to keep it a little bit more organic. And I'm going to do um, kind of like a dark to light using coffee bean, hurricane gray, burlap, or not burlap, sorry, sandbar, my mistake. And this is going to be the main color, which is Mason Dixon gray. If you've not used Mason Dixon gray yet, it has a really pretty lavender undertone, um, which I think is gonna complement this transfer really well because it has kind of like a neutral pastel style of color, okay? So majority of my piece I think is gonna be Mason Dixon Gray, but I really don't know what I'm doing today other than let's open up all the things and get messy. All right, shall we? Let's do it. All right, so we have Mason Dixon Gray, Sandbar, Hurricane Gray, Coffee Bean, which will be like the, the bare edges. And we're gonna kind of do a ombre mesh blend, all right? Getting all technical in here. Get the technical terms, mash up my color. Y'all can see my little chest down here. All I did to prepare this piece for today is clean it with white lightning 
And then I did give the edges a slight sand scuff just because they were a tiny bit shiny, but not too bad. So we're gonna get in here and uh, make a mess. All right, let's do it. So I have a couple brushes on the floor, one for each color. I also have my stain misting bottle filled with water, which is gonna help me blend my colors together. And on the floor, I have my new favorite thing. Check it out. You know what that is? This is my best dang brush. They called it the best dang brush. And it is the best dang brush. I am obsessed. Um, I don't know if you got to watch last week when I did that beautiful night scene with the blending and the ombre. I finished that piece, y'all. If you didn't go over to my Facebook page and check it out, you're missing out. I would show you, but it's a very big mess in here. You'd have to see all the things that go with it. So go to my Facebook page and check out that beautiful ombre cabinet that we started last week because it looks so good. So this brush is making my ombre blends possible. And I'm gonna show you how I use it, okay? So let's do this. So I'm gonna take coffee bean, and also I'm painting right over top of this metal and rivets. I'm going right over top of it all. We're gonna make this work, people. It's gonna work. I think I might even pull some paint off of them so that they're kind of showing a little bit because they have like a really cool, I don't know, patina effect that I don't wanna lose. All right, so I've got my coffee bean. I'm just gonna put it on the edges here. I, I kind of in my head know a little bit of what I wanna do, but I'm not 100% yet. So we're gonna make it up as we go along and there's a really loud recycling truck outside. Apologies, but can't control that. At least they're taking away my recycling, right? Could be worse. They could not show up and now I'd have too much garbage. Okay. So since we're gonna be blending these colors together, I'm not laying down anything other than like a pattern. The only way that I knew I wanted to design this case was to do a dark to light pattern, all right? So I'm gonna reuse brushes and I'm gonna paint over top of metal and I'm gonna put stuff on and I'm gonna take it off. That's how we're gonna do it today, okay? So I'm gonna put this brush aside and I'm gonna get another brush. So the next lightest color besides the coffee bean is Hurricane Gray. I'm not gonna blend them together yet, all right? We're just gonna kind of figure out where everything's gonna go because I need my best dang brush for the blending part, the blendy blend. It's gonna be fabulous. All right, so I'm dropping in this beautiful Hurricane Gray. And I actually kind of want a little bit of texture on this piece. I was debating adding sea spray, but I feel like I don't want to put sea spray on because when you add transfers, it needs to be onto a 100% dry surface and sea spray takes a little bit longer to dry. So because it takes a little bit longer to dry, I was worried that maybe it would take too long. So I'm just gonna work on this front section. We're gonna use this as my barometer to figure out what I'm gonna do with this piece could go any way. Okay, so coffee bean, and then I've got Hurricane Gray. Let's put some Mason Dixon Gray on here. Now here's Mason Dixon Gray looking gray in the container, looking all gray and pretty, but it is pretty lavender. What is the brush that's made, this brush, so this best dang brush is actually the balm for blending, but also makes waxing super duper easy. Um, I need you to check with your elite retailer because it's not on the Ixiba website yet. You can click the link above my head and go find your elite retailer and they will have the ability to tell you whether or not they have it in, but stay tuned. You're going to see me use this sneak peek of my best day and favorite brush. I have more than one because I like it a lot. <laughs> it's 70% uh, natural fibers, 30% synthetic, and you wash it like any other brush with your little scrubby soap and I like to kind of push the bristles together and let it sit on the counter this way to dry. Um, there is no hole to hang it, but hey, drill one in if you really want to, it's not hard. I use this so often that it probably never gets hung up. <laughs> Since I've got it, I think I've used it on every piece. All right, so let's put some Mason Dixon on here. And yes, I'm painting right over top of the metal because I'm gonna be putting my transfers right over top of the metal too.
So there's like little carvings kind of on this. We're going to paint right over top of them. We're going to cover them up. I just got this little box at the Goodwill. It's nothing fancy. Had some broken hardware um, on the side, so I've removed it. And I'll be putting new hardware on to get it where I want it. But I haven't decided yet even what hardware I'm going to do. Okay, so now we need to do the middle, which is going to be the lightest. So I'm going to switch brushes again. This just happens to be my oval small. It's not wet. There's a little bit of red on there from my last project, but I don't think it's going to come off. It's just going to stay on there and look cute. How's everybody doing? You still hanging in? Still hanging in? <laughs> All right, so let's add a little bit of sandbar. If you don't have sandbar, you could do burlap, you could do um, one of the tones that has kind of this beigey brown undertone. I feel like Samuel Gravy would be too light. And yes, I'm painting with the lid closed because I can. I'll open it up after I'm done and paint the edge. So I'm just getting in here, putting the paint on. So when I do a little bit of an ombre blend with this blendy brush, this beautiful best dang brush, you're gonna see me move all of this paint around. None of these colors are going to stay true. They're not going to stay their original color. They're gonna get all mashed up and move into different sections. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint for a fresh paint blend, if you know what I mean. We're gonna put back a little bit of this hurricane gray, and then we're gonna move into the Mason Dixon. But for now, I wanna work in small sections, so I don't, wanna, I don't wanna shove all the paint on there. I want it to get a little bit dry before I start to blend it all together. All right? All right, so on the floor I have a rag just a t-shirt, t-shirt like material, and I have my brush. This brush, I personally like to use damp. I like to wet this brush, okay? So it's gonna get wet, and you're gonna see me blotting it off like this. All I'm doing is blotting off the excess color that's gonna get on here because like I said, it's all gonna get contaminated. I'm gonna work my outside way inside, okay? Because if I started here, I'm gonna bring that lightness out. I want to start on the edges and bring the dark in. I want to make a really pretty base for this transfer. So now you can see, okay, so here's the colors. Can you tell why I picked the colors now? How close they are, how similar they are? Even though this is going to be a little bit girly with a little pink, a little Alice, we're still going to have a fairly neutral base. Don't be surprised if I put gold all over it. Don't be surprised if I come in here with another sneak peek. Do you want to see something else that's new? Dun, dun, dun. Dixie Bell is releasing this beautiful Harlequin stencil. So excited. So I've actually had one of these for a while because this was one of the, the stencils that did not make the first cup in the Mylar stencil grouping, which made me very sad because this is the one that I use the most. This goes with Mad Hatter like peanut butter and jelly. We're going to have a Mad Hatter beautiful delight in here. So this stencil is going to be coming very soon. A check with your elite retailer, please. This is going to be in the next line of release for the Mylar stencils under bells and whistles. All right, stay tuned, stay tuned. But this is going to go on here, probably with a lot of gold, because that's how I like to roll. I like shiny things. I like shiny things. Okay, so I've got my wet brush. I like to hold my handle up here. I like to hold it close to the, the tip. This gives me more control when I'm mashing the colors together. Do you need to come in a little closer? Do we need to move you? Again, I'm always afraid to move the camera because I'm afraid you're going to fall over. All right, here we are. So I've got my brush dampened. I'm going to start to mash these colors together. I like small circular movements to fade the edges. This brush makes blending a dream. A dream come true, y'all. So now I'm gonna wipe it off. Remember I told you I have a cloth on the floor? Wipe it off, re-wet it. 
this brush gives you the ability to really create a very pretty ombre effect. Really nice, a really pretty way. All you're doing is pulling these colors together. It's gonna make you work those arm muscles out. Big pipes over here. We're gonna get some big pipes. Moving some paint around. Blend that coffee bean in with my hurricane gray. So now let's move the hurricane gray into my Mesa Dixon gray, right? Go back in and add more. Say I wanted to add more coffee bean. All you're doing is blending those colors together. Look at how pretty. Look how pretty that blend is. How simple that blend is. Ooh, get out of my white paint. I feel like I even want that corner darker. Let's put some more coffee bean down here. And let's wipe it off on my t-shirt. Add a bit more water and we'll go from there. What do we think? Do we like this brush? Do you think you're going to get one? I think that you all are going to love it. Expect minor amounts of shedding. Any um, natural bristle brush sheds a tiny bit. Not a big deal though. Nothing we can't work with. I'll suffer a tiny bit of shed for this amazing blend because this makes my job awful easy. Look at that fade. Can you see how pretty that fade is? So good, right? So pretty. I see some yeses, I see some hearts. It's gonna be so easy. Um, buy two because you're gonna wanna keep one separate for wax because even though I wash this every single time, I don't wash my wax brush every time. I keep one for wax, one for paint. And honestly, the price point on these guys, I don't wanna give you the number because I don't know the exact amount, but it's very low compared to a lot of the other brushes. It's priced amazing. Okay, so now I've moved my coffee bean into my Hurricane Gray, mixed with a little bit of my beautiful Mason Dixon. Let's go back to the center and add the second coat of that sandbar. Because your paint has to be wet, right? It has to be movable. You can't blend like this on dry paint. It has to be wet. So I'm just gonna drop that in there and let's do this. So I've blotted off my brush. I've re-wet with my spray misting bottle filled with water. And we're just gonna start with the next layer, okay? Again, I like these little circles. I'm sure there's other ways and you're gonna find your way that you love it. But I like these small little blended circles. And yes, I'm painting over the hardware. I don't care. I kinda of want it to go away because it looks a little bit too I don't know, metally, <laughs> too metally. It looks too too shiny. I need to kind of make it disappear. In my head, these things always sound right when I say them, but, and then I say it out loud and I, whatever, it is what it is. I make stuff up as I go along when it comes to making up words. Okay, so now I'm looking at my blend and I'm loving it, but I don't want so much definition. I need to go back with my, my her, no, I don't want Hurricane Gray. I want Mesa Dixon Gray. Just here. Just need a little bit more wet. That's the thing about building these layers. You can just keep going until you're happy with what you've made. There's no rules in painting. There's no rules. You do as you wish. Okay, now I need to put a little bit more dark down here. That's the coffee bean. And blend. So now I've got my coffee bean, my hurricane gray, 
coming in and then my Mason Dixon Gray with a slight little lighter middle. So now, when you look at this, okay, look at this color. Look at the transfer. Do you see what I mean? That works better. This, these colors work better for me on this kind of a darker base because then they take center stage. If I would have went blue or pink, they would have, they would have disappeared. I feel like they needed this kind of neutral base. Do we like this? Do we think that this is a good look for the transfers or I should change it up? Because now at the time I can keep painting. Let's apply the new Bells and Whistles transfers by Dixie Bell. This transfer is called Alice in Wonderland. Gently unroll your transfer. Decide where you would like to place it before removing the protective backing paper. Once you're ready to apply the transfer, gently pull back the clear release sheet to separate the transfer from its protective paper. Tape your transfer down to prevent it from moving while you apply it. Working from the outside edge inward, apply pressure to release the transfer. You can gently lift the clear release sheet to check that it has adhered correctly.
This transfer is very large. I cut up the pieces that I wanted to use for this project and saved some for another project on a rainy day. I cut up the area that I wanted to use and applied it to the trunk. Bells and whistle transfers are very easy to use and very beginner friendly. I wanted to add just a little bit more shine and detail to the piece. This is a brand new Mylar stencil called Harlequin. It will be available March 2021 from the Bells and Whistles line at Dixie Bell. I used zinc gilding wax applied with a small brush onto the Mylar stencil to create a shadow-like effect. I used my gilding wax and silver to add accents to the front of the trunk as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fun little whimsical makeover.